This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. My guest today on Sports Files is St. Louis Cardinals pitcher Jason Mott. Last week, the Memphis City Council approved a resolution to allow the city to purchase AutoZone Park for $24 million in city-backed bonds and will complete a transaction for the AAA Redbirds to be purchased by the parent St. Louis Cardinals. The deal will essentially keep the team at third in union for a minimum of 17 years, the length of the new deal. My guest knows all about both clubs, having played in Memphis before becoming one of the mainstays in the Cardinals' bullpen. Today, closer Jason Mott on the Memphis deal, his foundation to help fight cancer, and the progress he's making on his rehabilitation from Tommy John surgery. That's next on Sports Files. Jason Mott, great to see you again. How are you? I'm awesome. Thank you guys for having me on. Happy New Year to you. All right, listen. This is the Mott look. We know the Mott look. Here's what I want to ask you. Why didn't you copyright the look? Because the Red Sox stole that look in the uh, World Series. And it's, just, it's just the beard, you know? I mean, uh, everyone, you know, it's, it's like one of those things. People have playoff beards all the time, whether it's hockey, football, baseball, whatever. Uh, it's just one of, I was talking to someone actually about it today. Uh, someone asked me about it, like, oh, how long have you had it? I was like, I've had it ever since I got called up in 08. I've had it 09, maybe not as long. Um, I just kind of let it go until <laughs> Mo decides uh, it's about time for a trim. And then I'm like, I think it looks all right. Is this like, a, I, obviously you were out last year. You had Tommy John surgery. You're on uh, with rehabilitation and, and hopefully, I guess, May's the target to get back. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, we're hoping, like I said, there's, I had it May 7th. So uh, that May, around May would be a year out. Mm -hmm. So that'd be awesome to be back out there, uh, you know, April, May. But, you know, we're, you know, we're taking it one day at a time right now. That's really all you can do with this. So you can't try to get too far ahead of yourself. You do too much, you end up pushing yourself back. So really, I'm just, you know, I, I do what I need to do today to go out there and get better and be out there, and uh, that's about all I do. How hard was it last year to be basically relegated to the role of cheerleader for your team as, you, as the Cardinals get back to the World Series, they fall to the Red Sox, and you know that you can't really help them out there? Uh, I mean, it, it was hard, but it wasn't. It was one of those things that... Uh, you know, I, I did it in spring training, so uh, I knew what I was in store for all mm -hmm. year. You were uh, prepared. I got to uh, I got to spend a whole season at home with my uh, with my newborn, so I got to watch her, you know, crawl, talk, eat, walk, do all that fun stuff that I would have never got to do. Uh, I got to uh, do some other stuff around St. Louis with, uh, you know, just getting to know, especially you know, a bunch of families and stuff like that. One in particular, uh, Brant. Uh, one of the little boys at one of the hospitals that I got to become yep. really close with that, um, you know, if I, uh, if I had been playing, I wouldn't have been able to have uh, got to know him and his family as well as I did. Uh, so it's one of those things, um, it stinks because, you know, I didn't get to play, but, uh, you know, everything happens for a reason and you don't really know what, what God's plan was. I didn't know what it was either when, it, uh, when my elbow went out, but uh, you know what, I knew that uh, it all happened for a reason, so I was just going to, you know, go with it and uh, I wouldn't trade you know, a day with, with Brant or a day sitting there getting, getting to go home and watch my little one crawl around or taking her to the mall, walking around for, for anything. It was a, not a good year baseball-wise. Well, I didn't give up any runs, so it was actually a good year <laughs> baseball-wise. It was uh, perfect. Right, so, you know, it was one of those, you know, I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't get to play, but, you know, there was other stuff outside of baseball yep. that I was able to do, which was uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't take any of that back. Yeah, you took a ne negative, certainly made it a positive. Uh, we know that the Tommy John surgery has come a long, long way mm -hmm. from when the guy, Tommy John, yep. originally had it done. Um, the prospects to get back to where you were, because before you got hurt, you had become one of the premier closers in the game. Can you get back to that point? We'll see. Uh, you know, it's one of those things, uh, you know, I'm, right now my, my goal is to go out there and just get healthy uh, and go out there, whatever I can do to help that help. help our ball club win uh, that like I said at the end of the day is what it's all about um, and uh, that's that's all I can do I, I can't I, I'm not 
looking too, too far into the future or what they're going to have me do or what I'm going to do. Um, right. I need to go out there. I need to be healthy uh, and pitch well. Um, that's, and that's what it all comes down to. How much does it help that you play for, uh, if not the best, certainly one of the best organizations, not only in baseball, but in, in professional sports? Yeah. And I, I assume they got your back. Uh, I would, I would, I would like think they would. No, you know, but no, it's, it's been awesome. You know, I've been, uh, I've been, I got drafted in 03 uh, by the Cardinals and I got called up in 08 uh, and I've been with them ever since. And it's, it's one of those things that it's a, it's an awesome organization to be with. Um, you know, I got to play for, you know, now Hall of Famer, Tony La Russa, and, uh, you know, getting to play for a guy like Matheny uh, and with the guys in the front office, Mo and DeWitt and those guys, I mean, they're just a great group of guys that uh, really you, you you like being around. You like uh, spending time with them, and they're they're normal guys. When they see you, it's not you know walk by like mm. you right, know, like they, right. They want to know about stop, you, how you're right. doing. You know, I actually got a I got a text message the other day. Went to the uh, Liberty Bowl gala, and I put something on um, on. I mean, I was wearing a bow tie for Ronald McDonald House, and Mo saw it on Twitter and like text me. I was like, oh, that's pretty funny. You know, you know, so it was one of those things that you know it's you know it's guys like that. It's organization like that that you know people are. You know, they're, they're, they're normal people. It is a business. Right. You know, when it comes down to it, it is a business. But they are actually, you know, real people who do probably care about, uh, you know, what's going on. Absolutely. You, you talked about the Liberty Bowl gala. You are... Gala, gala, tomato, tomato. You, you are... You're, <laughs> <laughs> let's call the whole thing off. Right. Um, you're a part of the fabric now of this city. In the off season, you have made this your home. Caitlin is from, your wife is from mm -hmm. Memphis. So this is very important to you. And I, I imagine that the news last week, because it had been iffy for a while there, the city council voting uh, for the resolution yep. where they purchase AutoZone Park, the relationship with the Cardinals will continue for 17 years, at least 17 yep. years with the Redbirds. That's very important to you because yeah. you played for the Redbirds and you played for the Cardinals now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome. I mean, uh, being able to come up through, um, you know, the ranks with the Cardinals, being in Springfield was an awesome city there, and it's what, three hours, two and a half hours away from St. Louis. And playing here in Memphis, uh, great ballpark, uh, and being able, you know, what is it, three and a half, four hours up there, it depends on how slow you drive or fast <laughs> you drive, but uh, how big of a hurry you're in. But, uh, you know, it's a nice little, you know, it's, it's a great ballpark. Uh, you know, I'm glad that they were able to do that here and keep the ball club here because it's great having them here. Uh, you know, I know this is Cardinal Nation down here, and, uh, you know, people wanted the team here, and people like going out and seeing the up-and-comers, whether it was a – Colton Wong or Michael Waka, exactly Tavares. You know, you get to see these guys come up, and you know, if you know when they get called up, you get a you get to go four hours, three and a half hours up the road and watch them in a big league uniform, or turn on the TV and they're on there too. So it's pretty awesome. There are some people who don't know this, and I did not know this until I did my research. And I've had you on my radio show a number of times. You were drafted in 2003 by the Cardinals organization as a catcher. Yes. Yeah, I was a uh, I was a catcher my whole life. Uh, they drafted me as a catcher, and I caught 03, 04, 05, and a month in 06. And uh, they were like, yeah, you can't hit, so we're going to go ahead and... <laughs> the stick wasn't uh, yeah, there, was it? Hitting a buck 80 doesn't really do much for anyone. So they're like, yeah, we're going to turn you to a pitcher. I was like, all righty. Uh, last time I pitched, I think I was like 12 years old uh, on an all-star team. I threw like two innings. Uh, so it was one of those things I was like, well, you know, I've never, haven't really done it. So, you know, you just... Give me a little bit of a little bit of a chance, and I just really went out there and, uh, you know, kind of same thing with the Tommy John. I just took it one day at a time and mm -hmm. did what I could do to try to make myself better. And even, even you know, as I was moving up, even in the big leagues, every day I was I was learning stuff. You know, whether it was from Dave Duncan, whether it was from Tony, or you know, our bullpen coaches that we've had a couple of them. You know, through the time I've been there, or just the veteran guys we've had on our team, like a Wayne Wright or a Chris Carpenter. Right. Uh, you know, having those guys around is awesome. So it's one of those things that you. Uh, you get to go out there and you get to learn every day, and that, that's pretty much what I did. I just try to go out there and learn every single day, try to get better, uh, because the hitters are always trying to get better, so you always have to try to get better out there on the mound to uh, you know, compete with them. You took advantage of an opportunity. Some other organizations may have said, listen, the guy can't hit. Yep. We're not going to keep him around. Somebody had the uh, foresight of turning you around as a pitcher yep. and, and look where it, where it uh, brought that organization, yep. look where it put you. Uh, again, uh, before the injury, certainly one of the premier closers uh, in Major League Baseball, and hopefully that'll continue when you come back. 2011 World Series title. Uh, first of all, where's the ring? Where do you? 
You, you got it locked up, I or do you actually wear it? I sold it on eBay for like ten bucks. <laughs> I mean, I wanted, I wanted to upsize my Chick Fil A to it. No, uh, yeah, I have it in a safe. Um, yeah, it's sitting in a safe. In you my ever house. pop it out once in a while and say, "Look uh, at this." I think, <laughs> no, I, I think I've worn it. I wore it to our event, our Strikeout Cancer event um, last year. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't wear it this year, uh, but I've worn it to a couple different, a uh, couple different dinners in St. Louis. Uh, we, there's always a big like autism dinner in St. Louis. I've, right. I've worn it to that. Uh, you know, like I, I, I wear it to, like I said, some bigger dinners. Uh, I don't really, you know, walk down the street and sweat, no, you, su sweats in a hoodie. Out there with sweats the... in a hoodie and, you know, wearing it. Um, so, yeah, I, I've worn it a couple times. but Close to a second one. Yes. Uh, obviously, you guys, you guys fell to Boston, as I mentioned earlier. But World Series 11, uh, good playoff run 12, World Series uh, runner-up in 13. And that must be a great thing, too. Not only playing for a terrific organization that cares about its players, but that you know you're always in the race. You're always going to yep. be there in the end. Yeah, I mean, you would like to think that, you know, especially with the, with the group of guys we have. We have a good core group of guys that are, that are around and hopefully be around for a long time. With Yachty, Wayno, and Holiday, you got guys like that that are around. And you got younger guys coming up. You have other guys uh, coming in. Um, you know, it's just it's just fun going to the ballpark with these guys, and uh, I think one of the main things is they're um, they're really good people who are mm -hmm. happen to be able to play some baseball pretty pretty darn good. So it's fun to it's fun to go to the park every day and be around those guys, and that's why this year wasn't. I mean, it was tough obviously because I wasn't playing, but I actually got for the first time to like sit back and watch you know watch Matt Carpenter go out there and do what he does, mm -hmm. and John Jay running around you know catching balls all over the place, Holiday smashing balls whereas sometimes I'm out there you know I'm doing my arm stuff I'm getting myself ready you don't get to see all the game all the game right. I got a better chance to sit there and you know watch a little bit more of the game and uh you know it's not a bad it. thing no no not I, a bad. I, 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 got, I got a I got a pretty good seat, seat so, so I mean, it wasn't that bad I know everybody wants to wants to know what look when you're out in the bullpen um you, you know what obviously you're in the dugout sometimes you're in the bullpen sometimes what what do the relievers talk about I mean yeah, what do I, they do I can't tell you Come on. No, uh, give give we, me a story. What's we, the craziest thing you guys have done? I know you've done crazy craziest things. thing we've ever done. I definitely can't share that. We, we can't, no, okay. we, no, uh, the second or third man, craziest. We, uh, I mean, we just, I mean, we're, we're around each other so much. I mean, as a team in general, um, like they're, I mean, I'm around them more than I am my family right. um, in general. So, I mean, you get to know them. You get to, I mean, you, you really like, we'll, we'll, we'll talk baseball stuff. Like, like this year, I found myself down there talking baseball with, you know Rosenthal or Manus or Seegers mm -hmm. and you know all these guys and you know even in the clubhouse you're, you're just sitting there talking you're getting to know these guys a little bit better because at the end of the day we, we are like a big family. Right. But, the, but the personal stuff you're taking to your grave. Uh, you're but, not going to bring no, it. <laughs> yeah they, they, I mean they, they, there's not really much that. They don't that, they don't. Not, you, not, okay. not that crazy yeah we're not I mean you know like, like, like I said we have we have a bunch of like a bunch of normal decent Good guy. guys down Good there guys. You, you, you know what I mean so there aren't any really crazy off-the-wall stories <laughs> that, uh, you know, so n nothing nothing really too crazy. All right. Uh, as everybody knows around here, you, you've started the Jason Mott Foundation, and, and what you and Caitlin have done um, just in a short time is remarkable, fighting cancer. Uh, take a minute or so to tell everybody about it who, who doesn't know what you guys are doing. Uh, we started the, uh, the Jason Mott Foundation. Um, my wife's grandfather, uh, Lynn Doyle, he actually, they own Lynn Doyle Flowers. Her family still does. Uh, he was diagnosed with uh, lung cancer in 2010. Mm -hmm. um, so it was one of those things that we, uh, in 2011, we were, we were trying to trying to do some stuff and try to have an event, uh, but we didn't want to just like throw it together uh, with the World Series. Kind of took us a little bit longer. Uh, so we didn't want to just throw it together and, and knowing, knowing Lynn and anyone who's watching who has done anything with Lynn Doyle Flowers, they're, you know, my wife's grandfather was, it had to be, the right way, done the right First way. Place. So if we'd have just thrown it together, he'd have been like, awesome, you, you just threw this junk together for me. <laughs> Great. Uh, no. Right, right, I, I wish you had taken your time. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he, he, ended, he, he passed away uh, December 26th, uh, 2011, and we pretty much made it our goal in 2012 to um, you know have our first event and raise money for the, uh, the West Clinic and the Wings Foundation here in Memphis. Uh, that's where he did um, his chemo and did his uh, stuff like that. So. Uh, you know, we, we made a point to have an event uh, last year in 2012. Well, I guess two years ago now, technically. Mm -hmm. um, but we uh, we did that and, um, you know, tried to make it bigger and better in uh, 13. And we were able to 
I think we raised over like $50,000 in uh, 13 at our event. Uh, so, you know, the plan is, you know, keep getting bigger, keep getting better. And we, uh, you know, we, we have our Strike Out Cancer t-shirts um, that are online. Uh, our website is just jasonmottfoundation.org and there you can click on shop there and it takes you to the website. We have posters where we've had the entire team, uh, St. Louis Cardinal team, in our Strike Out Cancer shirts. Um, it's a great poster. So we got like 25, 26 of the guys on the team. Uh, and it was, it was pretty cool that, you know, once again, just having those guys on the team that, you know, we, we were hoping, you know, five, six, seven guys would be able to take, the, oh, hey, I'll come take a picture. And it literally, instead of taking it one day to make the poster, it took us like three days because all the guys were coming through trying to take pictures and stuff. So that, that, that that's kind of ball club that we do have, and it's stuff like that that uh, is, is, yeah, is awesome to be a part of. That goes back to what you said about having yeah. good guys and, and what you and Caitlin have done. Remarkable. Continue success with that. I know it's going to get bigger and better with each passing year, and, and we look forward to that. But before we go, Jason Mott, you're on the hot seat. All right. Because it's five for the road. I can't wait. First thing that comes to mind. So don't think about this. Just boom. Ugh. Learn it out. That may not be good. No. Is this edited? You guys editing? This <laughs> no. Uh, we're no. not editing All this. All right. Perfect. Professional sports team. Your favorite professional sports team. You can't say the Cardinals. Oh, I thought you were going to say like growing up or whatever. Uh, well, what's your favorite professional sports team? I don't, um, I don't really have a... Come uh, on. you got to like something else. I, I don't. You don't like a football team? I, I watch... Um, I watched like the uh, growing up. Who was it? Growing up, I liked the uh, the Twins only They're, because my, twins. my older brother played for the minor leagues for the Twins. Oh, did so he? I, okay. I always looked up to him. So yeah, I, I don't really watch much. All right, there you go. Grizzlies. The twins. The twins. Say, just... <laughs> you could say the Grizzlies. <laughs> okay. There. Okay. Rapid fire here. Favorite athlete of all time. Um, I'm the worst at this game. Um, I always liked Pudge Rodriguez growing up. Okay. Uh, Favorite music. What do you listen to? Everything. Uh, everything from Lil Wayne to Garth Brooks to Adele. Some people watching this are just tuning in right now. They'll think you're like, hey, he's talking to Zach Brown. Yeah, I like Zach Brown too. Yeah, I, I, I guess <laughs> did that you see as his well. concert? Uh, no, I did not. We had uh, there was something we what the what did we have? Me and wife, we were somewhere else. You were that doing night. You, were, you were doing and then, something else. All right. And then someone's like, I went there. I was like, That's you look I like. To go. Okay, real quick. Favorite music? I mean, favorite movie? Favorite movie? Um, either Bull Durham or Dumb and Dumber. We watch the new Dumb and Dumber when it comes out. Dumb and Dumber Two. Dumb and Dumber. Dumb and Dumber. Uh, <laughs> I probably will just because it's Dumb and Dumber and Jim Carrey and they're, they're, I love they're, Jim Carrey. They're, they're they're back in it. So favorite TV show. Uh, My Little Pony. I'm just kidding. I, I couldn't think. Of I thought you were going to say you watch your one-year-old is <laughs> watching TV. No. Uh, favorite TV. Go on. Ten seconds. Favorite. Ah, oh, jeez. Um, I don't really watch TV. I probably just. I don't know. Sports Center. Say it. Everybody ends up going to Sports no, Center. No. Well, I. I I like Modern Family. Eh, time is up. Modern Family is a good oh, show. Oh, you can't say eh. That no, no, <laughs> you got it. You beat the puzzle. Jason, great to see you. Yes, thank sir. you thank so much for joining us. Appreciate, we appreciate it. Thank you, guys. We'll take a break. When we come back, it's our overtime segment. <laughs> Saturday night at the Cannon Center, V3 Fights, which has established itself as the premier amateur mixed martial arts company in the southeastern United States, is going pro. V3 will host a nine-fight card featuring some of the top pro fighters in the region. And the man who puts the card together is V3 matchmaker Channy Wason, who stopped by the studio recently to preview fight night. Well, Channy, thanks so much for being with us. We Thank appreciate you. your time. Let me, let me go back in time to, to the start for you. You were young, you started to fight, and, that just, and you also started to make matches and put matches together. Give me a little bit about your background. Well, uh, I believe it was 06, 07 is when the MMA got real big off the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, but right before that, I'd moved up here from Florida. I moved over to Tennessee. Uh, my cousin, Sean Allen, who's the current pro fighter at the time, I got with him, and this was back when guys were fighting in barns. They were fighting in rodeo places, and I went to some shows with him. I didn't really understand, I, you know, street fighters in a cage. I didn't really get the whole concept, but uh, he fought twice in one night. That'll just tell you how far it's been. But, uh, yeah, I saw how it was going, and I got, got that promoter's niche where I just started seeing how I could do it better. And uh, one thing led to another, and then I ended up moving over to Arkansas. Uh, well, I threw a show there in a gym, a small little show, you know, in a gym, made some money, sold some tickets, came to Arkansas. Started training jiu-jitsu, had another show. First show at Holiday Inn, I was the promoter of it. I was the matchmaker. I was selling tickets. I was getting guys lined up before my fight, and that's when I decided to have my first fight. I had a fight, fell in love with it, 
you know, six years, seven years later, here we are. What is the hardest thing about matchmaking? The hardest thing about matchmaking is uh, probably trying to defend each match, like explain why this fight happened, because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot that goes into each fight, and every time you put a fight out there. Uh, in the public size, the first thing that pops up, if, if it's awesome, it's awesome. But they're like, well, why not him versus him? Why not? No one knows all the steps it took to get to A versus B. So that's the hardest part is probably, you know, defending every day. I'm getting, why is this guy fighting this guy? Why is this guy, you know? And I would imagine from a matchmaker's point of view, when you have a dud of a fight, I mean, you feel yeah. bad about that. Yeah. You feel, look, maybe I could have did a better job. But fortunately for you, and, and we've seen a lot of your V3 fight cards, they've been tremendous. And we got this professional fight card coming up on Saturday that we'll talk about at the Cannon Center. But what type of information are you gathering and where are you getting this information from that you become so knowledgeable about all these fighters? Because we're not just talking about fighters in Memphis, in Tennessee, and in the Mid-South. We're talking about the, in the entire South that you're finding yeah. these fighters. Yeah, well, it's easy to grab, you know, Bob, you know, from here and, and Joe from here and put them together. But, you know, and any promotion can do that. But with being the matchmaker for V3, you know, it gives me a little more options. Uh, you know, everyone wants, I've got, a, I've got a advantage that other matchmakers don't. You know, everyone wants to fight for V3. You know, w you know we're the premier organization in the Mid-South. So that kind of gives me an advantage. But to get those top guys, like, there's a lot that goes into it. The first thing is always record. You want you hear a guy? What's his record? Okay. After you do that, there's ways to find out who has he beat. You know, a guy can be 10 and 0, and everyone he beat was their debut fight, and you right. got a 3 and 0. You know, right. so then you start narrowing your process down. You know, for each show, you know what guy you have to have on this card. And then you got to find. You know, I might have. I got to have this guy. I got a hundred options. Well, let's just start. You know, it's process of elim elimination. One works out. You got to. You know, the styles and all that. Generally speaking, you know, V3 fights, we have awesome fights, and uh, I get a lot of credit for that. However, when you put a fight together, you know, I'm going to do the best I can to hope that fight's awesome, but there can be some that are duds that are supposed to be awesome, and then there can be some on paper that look boring that turn out to be fight of the night. You once, know, I can't control that. Cage, yeah, once yeah. they get in the cage, you have no control. Now, how do you verify a fighter's history? I mean, is it that organized where you know if it says 9-1, and one, it is officially 9-1? It, 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 it is at the pro level, because everything at the pro level is done by the state athletic commissions. So that that is, like right now, I could pull up a pro's name and find out their exact record. At the amateur level, every state's ran by a different, you know, in Tennessee, we're the ISKA. Right. Arkansas's ran by their state. It's it's different. Some states are better about getting that, and, and they are in Tennessee getting better about that now. So uh, I might be able to pull up and it says 5-0, and oh, and they're telling me they're 8-0. Oh. But with YouTube, social media, like I do a lot of investigating to find out, you know. How often do you get a call from a manager of a fighter or the fighter themselves to try to uh, to get you to put them in on the, on the fight card that night? When this started about... When, when Nick got with me from, uh, I was with another company. That's Nick Carmine, the Carmeyer. president of V3 Yes, fights. sir. Uh, when he got with me to come over to V3 at the first, you know, I was excited. It, it can't, you know, it was a great time. Right. First year or so, I became the full permanent matchmaker uh, full time. Every year since, it, it became a little more like, okay, you know, and I'm a humble guy, so I'm like getting blown up, getting friend requests, getting followers on Twitter, et cetera, et cetera. It is, in the last couple of years, it, I, honestly, I cannot keep up with it. It sounds crazy. I'm no rock star at all, but I cannot keep. <laughs> now I see why Joe Silva, the matchmaker for UFC, doesn't have Twitter or Facebook. And now I see why, because like my messages just pile in. I want on this card. I want on this card. It's it's time consuming. It's a lot of work. You're a family guy. You have a, you have a child. One one child. I have two it? kids. Two yes. kids. A beautiful wife. And you're working and and dealing with this 24/7. But I, I would imagine it's rewarding for you when you know you've had a great card. It's gone off without a hitch, and the fans have come and they've enjoyed it. It is. It, that's very rewarding. And uh, a lot of my successes, m most matchmakers are older men that don't connect with the fighters. Uh, I pride myself on, you know, I'm just one of the guys. Like all fighters respect me, right. but I respect them too. Right. So V3 is the company I work for. But I'm always got their back. We go to meetings for V3. I'm standing up for the fighters, and you know the fighters know that I have their back. So that, therefore, you know that's why I get a lot of these guys wanting the car because V3 takes care of them. You know, I'm always sticking up for the fighters, whether it's injury camp. I, I'm, you know. That's a great I'm point. There. It's like a uh, you always hear like a, a player's manager or a player's coach. Oh yeah. That's exactly what you are with these fighters. All right, this Saturday the Cannon Center. Yes. Uh, great location for your first ever professional fight card for V3. This looks pretty incredible. Ten great fights. How hard was it, or was it easy to put this match, to, these matches together? Uh, every time we have a show, we, everyone relaxes. Uh, you know, we got 25 amateur shows. The next day, everyone's relaxed, trying to take a break, and I'm hitting up Nick Carmar, our president. It's like, when's the next date? Because it's it's an obsession for me. I like. You want to get started? I, right I got away. 100 names. Yes. I want to just start making the best card because I always want to outdo myself. You know, as far as the card goes. 
Well, then when it's time to go pro, you can ask Nick yourself. I blew him up. I wanted this because this is a lot more intel. You got contracts. You're dealing with managers. You got X amount of dollars to make X amount of fights. And here I am. I've got spoiled over the years making awesome amateur cards. It's a little different when you go up to the pros. But hey, I had enough guys respect me. I worked my tail off, and I promise you, this is the best pro pro card in the entire Mid South has ever happened. You know, we haven't had an all pro fight uh, in Memphis since UFC came back in '09. Right. Everyone does pro ams, a couple pros, and then some amateurs. I mean, this entire the first fight, you're watching two professionals. You know, I mean, from the first fight, the first fight is two guys. They were 15 and 0, and uh, 15 and 1 as amateurs. You know, so and they're, you know they're the first fight on the card. These are the best of the best in the area, in the entire Mid South, the entire South, and. Uh, Channy, you've done it again. It looks like a great card. We're looking forward to Saturday and being over at the Cannon Center to watch these fights. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Can't wait. See we you Saturday. It. Thank you. Finally, big news for the Grizzlies. Marcus Saul returned to game action after missing seven weeks due to a sprained MCL in his left knee. Gasol scored 12 points in 24 minutes in Tuesday's win over Oklahoma City. Now, the Grizzlies have also received a big lift from newcomers James Johnson and Courtney Lee, and Gasol's return gave them a fighting chance to return to the postseason with half the regular season still to play. The Grizz host Rudy Gay in Sacramento tomorrow night. And that'll do it for the show. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time.